Hello, hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Rosalinda. But look who we have here. Hi guys. Mariella. <laughs> Mariella is here. Um, so some uh, for some of you guys that don't know my sister Mariella, you guys can look at um, our my previous vlog about her um, having a baby. So Mariella has decided that she does want to share her labor what is it called labor and delivery labor and delivery story it was a wild one it was a wild one girl yep and Barbarella has decided that she wants to share with you all it was a lot we all went through a lot during that time <laughs> so Mariela she is now ready she's not going through it so she's not like like what fed up uh, fed up in pain <laughs> emotionally crying <laughs> everything <laughs> everything all above we had all the emotions during that time so you want to start them off or should i start them off um you can start them okay off. so mariela was scheduled to be induced on wednesday the 9th yes. march 9th so she was scheduled to be induced that day so i dropped her off at the hospital like at 3 30 because that's the time they gave her but they didn't give you like i guess inducing is a pill which i didn't know M me either i thought it was like una injección Andale. <laughs> <laughs> but they gave her her first induced pill mm -hmm. at 6 p.m and nothing like she wasn't hurting she's like it's like if i didn't take anything nothing yep. was happening so then she said that at 10 p.m. they gave her her second pill. Yep. And then that's when you started feeling... The contractions, they were very painful. <laughs> if you think I... If I thought I knew what the pain was going to be like, <laughs> nope, I was completely wrong, guys. Oh, I literally, the moment I started feeling them, like, crazy painful, and my mom is like, I want this in. And I'm like, <laughs> I want this in nada. I want the fedora now. <laughs> it's because Juanita was with her. Like, at that time... They were only allowing one person in the room with you and you know Juanita she's her, the mom like of course she's gonna want to be there it's her yeah. first grandchild Mariela's her favorite <laughs> so we're all her favorites no 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 Mariela's her favorite it's okay Mariela I'm okay with that <laughs> so she was in there and yeah she was like Mariela's big concern was like Juanita's not gonna let me get that fedora and I was like like Juanita who it's you it's your body you decide yeah and then she's like I don't know I don't know if I can be strong <laughs> enough and I was like yes you are what watch when the pain comes so at 10 that started happening so like it started hurting more you yeah. started feeling this stronger when did they give you like another pill or you did you didn't get no. another pill after the second one oh my god you start feeling a little about every single thing a part of your bone so I felt it like from the spine to down my feet um i would get up and i would be like reaching out my hand and my mom would rush she's like what's wrong what's wrong and i'm like oh it's coming and then she's like it's nothing like you got this i was like i feel like you gave birth 10 years ago so you for you this is nothing for me it was like i was giving birth but without giving birth <laughs> uh so no so yeah so then the next big occurrence was that at 3 a.m., yeah. so from 10 p.m., right, she got her second pill. She was already feeling it. She was going up and down with the pains. So then at 3 p.m., that's when she decides to get the epidural. That's when I said, give me the good stuff. The nurse is like, you need to let me know on time because once you start, like, moving a lot or, like, they're getting stronger, you're not able to get the epidural. So she's like, let me know. So me as a Winnie, I was like, <laughs> no, let me Winnie. have it. Because um, when I started, I, I didn't even last with like the painful ones, but not even for like an hour or so. Like once I started getting them, I'm over here like, I got this. Like I can suck it in. I'm, I control the pain. The pain doesn't control me. <laughs> not even. I was like, my ass. Like, nope. And that's when I look at that, I call the nurse and she's like, are you ready? And I'm like, yes. And then my mom looks at me with this face of disappointment. She's like, I went with four kids without it. How can you not go without it? Like, trust me, once you do it, you're done the old pain goes away. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I said, give me the pedoral. Next thing you know, they tell her she has to go outside. And the guy comes in, he hooks it up. And it was a big relief. Like, after that, I didn't have to bug my mom for her hand. Even though she, like, I guess she kind of, like, wanted to. Because being there for me was a big thing for her. So she would just come. But we both needed a break, like, to sleep. 
week because we didn't know how long it was going to be like. Because the nurses told me it could be up to three days I could be waiting for labor. For like induced, like when induced. you get induced. So I was like, holy crap. Like, I don't know if I, like, why does it take that long? And then I was a little scared just because with the epidural, you are like numb. So I couldn't walk. So, you know, your butt can only last in bed for so long without feeling like numb. Like, let's move. Yeah. So, um... We still, she still got it. Yeah, I still got it though. <laughs> Girls still needed it. Okay, but I, I don't think necessarily means you're a weenie. It's just, you know, there's modern medicine now. Like, the epidural is available. When Juanita had us, like, she had Mariela in, like, the rancho. Like, the rancho where there's, there's no electricity, girl. Like, of course, there's going to be no epidural. But the thing is that my mom had them, like, let's say her water broke. And then she, she went into delivery, yeah. right? So, which, that's... If that happens to you, then of course your labor is like shorter, your water broke, so that means you're already being dilated. Mariela's water never broke, and then up to 41 weeks, she was only dilated to centimeters. So obviously, when you get when you get induced, it's mm -hmm. a different story. So once you got your second pill, and then you kept like just processing the, the labor, yeah. Mariela started opening fairly quick. Mm -hmm. Like... I get the whole like, oh, and dudes can take up to two to three days because f for women that don't open at all, mm -hmm. like Mariela was already two centimeters and she was opening fast because when I called at 6 a.m., I called my mom, she said the nurse had con gone in and that she was open seven centimeters, right? Yeah. So she was open seven centimeters by 6 a.m., but her water had not no. break. Like that was the big thing that her water was just not breaking. But I was like, seven centimeters, why don't they go in there and just break her water? Mm -hmm. Like, that was what I was thinking. And that the whole time, well, I think you were like already kind of like, I mean, at this time it was three hours that yeah. you were numb. So you were like, okay. But when I called like around 11, 12, you can hear Mariela was just like in so much like discomfort. Like, it was so much discomfort at this point because... She got the epidural at 3 a.m. and it was already going, what, like on 10 hours mm -hmm. of not moving. Or eating. Or eating. Or drinking. All I could have was ice chips, which honestly, like, it helped just because it was something cold and something that I was able to play with to make it into water. But not able to eat or drink, girl, like, that made me want to love food and water <laughs> so much more or appreciate it when I had it. <laughs> Because going for so long without it, it could get to you. Like, I kind of mentally prepare myself like, oh, well, you're going to be here for a couple hours. You know that it's going to happen. And hopefully it's sooner than later than what I thought it was. But just not having it, it was a little bit of a uh, dread a little bit. Just because, like, it, I wanted it wanted so, it. so bad after a certain amount of time. So, Yeah. Yeah, that, and besides that, she couldn't move. Like, she was already in the bed for 10 hours not moving. And now looking back and that we're talking about it, like, the stuff that Marilla was telling me she was feeling and how swollen she was getting, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, there was already, like, preeclampsia, like, rolling in. We didn't know any of that yet. But what ended up happening is that, like, let's say, also, your your she never actually had a doctor. She only had a midwife. So the midwife would come in, and not even, huh, like, you just had nurses come in. Yeah. So, like, nurses would just come in, and then I get to some point, like, at 10 a.m., they decided, oh, your baby's going to be big. Like, you're going to have a nine-pound baby. Mm -hmm. So they just kept saying, like, oh, this baby's going to be big. It's going to take you a long time to deliver it. When it's, like... Girl, what do you mean? She's opened seven centimeters. Like, pop that water and she might open the other three. You would never know, right? Like, but I guess the thing is that they don't want to pop your water. They don't want to break your water because then the baby can't be without it, like, for too long. But I think there's just, like, a lot of little things that happened during that period that they didn't quite pay attention because then the, first of all, the... She never got a doctor. Yeah. So then the midwife would be like, oh, I'll come in at one. And she never came, huh? And then she'd be like, oh, I come in at two. And then she never came. So then at like three, I was like 
what do you mean she's not there? And like Mariela, you could hear her in the back. And for and for a moment, Mariela was like, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't, because I was just talking to my mom. And I'm like, ¿Cómo se siente, ma? And then I'm like, Mariela, and she's like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to yeah. you. Anyway, she was fed up. She was over it. She said that like her body was getting numb, like estaba, um, like falling asleep, like parts yeah. of her body because she couldn't move. And um, Mariela was already retaining so, so much water. So then like at 3.30, I put I told my mom, put me on speaker. And I just went off. Like I don't, I didn't directly say like you guys, you know, like meaning to the nurses. I was just talking like to my mom, like very strong, like in English. Or I was telling Mariela, I'm like, Mariela, you better tell them that they come in right now. Tell them to send your midwife or your doctor. They need to break your water. You need to get this going. Yep. Your body's falling asleep, like which is not supposed to be happening. Like my mom was like, my mom was showing me her and Marila was so swollen. Like Marila has really thin lips. Like we have thin little lips. Marila's mm -hmm. lips were so big. Her nose was big. Like all of this was big. And I could tell him like, no, there's something wrong with her. So I was just going off and like just in, like talking to Marila. You need to tell him that. But Marila was just under so much stress. She couldn't just be... She couldn't like say that for herself, right? So then my mom finally too, she just started saying things once I like kind of just sparked that like match. And then at four, they came in, the midwife. Yeah. And then what did, what did she say? Like She came out happy saying, are we ready to have this baby? And then at that point, I, I just gave her like a smirk or like a face of like, I'm ready to have this baby. Please get him out. Like I, I love my baby, don't get me wrong. But at that point, I was in so much pain. Like, I was only numb from my waist down. So from the, my back to my spine and to my neck, I could feel. I could basically still move my hands. I could feel my back. So at one point, I started feeling, like, this very sharp pain where, like, it would hurt for me to even just put myself up, like, in this position where I was supposed to for me to push. And when they would tell me to put my neck down, like, I was feeling this, like, sharp pain in my neck. So I feel like I didn't even get to enjoy having my baby because I it was amazing not to feel nothing weighs down <laughs> when I was pushing the kid because the kid was humongous as lengthwise. But just the fact, like, I wasn't, uh, the, I got the pedal for a reason, so I wouldn't feel much pain. I mean, I knew there was going to be some pain, you know, like, you can't take away all the pain. But the fact that I was feeling pain from my neck to my spine and be pushing and being scared I was going to pull a nerve or something because I was not feeling down there, but yet everything was up here. No, it was just... It was a lot. And you could tell, you can hear... Like in her voice when she told me, I don't want to talk to anybody. Like, yeah. I can tell. So once they came in at four and then the midwife came in, that baby came right out because she popped her water. Like, she popped her water and then right away she just opened those other three centimeters and she, the baby just came out. And yeah. they were all like, oh my gosh, we thought it was going to take forever because your baby is like 9.5 pounds. Mm -hmm. Like they just thought because it was gonna be a big baby that it was gonna take longer, and I was like, "What the hell? What kind of nurses are these?" Mm -hmm. So there, the baby's out. We're all happy. Marilla's tired, right? We're just we were just soaking everything in, right? Like after the baby, my mom was still there, but obviously they were there since since like seven, six p.m the prior day and it was already 4 p.m. so it was getting to like that 24 hour period right so they did everything with Mariela right after my mom was like um when I FaceTime her she was FaceTiming with Leo and he was in the little thing they had just taken him out with stuff all over him still yeah. everything I saw everything which is like oh my gosh right we're so happy Mariela of course is still sedated so she's just like okay good right she's happy like the normal blissful mm -hmm everything so then that night then they moved her from the labor room to like what where recovery she was room. to recovery room and then i went that yeah. night i went that night so i stood that night and we were fine like marilla looked to me at that point just normal like just tired just sleepy like groggy and then she was still like under the anesthesia from the epidural and that wore off like the like in the middle of the night yeah, because night. the nurse like the first night the nurses come in like all the time and they were checking her blood pressure and they were um checking the baby and then since she got the epidural they came in they took out her um her catheter and all that stuff and like you know to us we were normal and then 
Friday, so that was Thursday, and then the morning on Friday, again, we're fine, um, and all cool, chill, like, I think, like, to me, you look fine, like, you just looked yeah. tired, like, that's it, and then baby was great, so we didn't really think much of it, but then that night, my mom stayed, and I think you said that it was, like, a rough night with the baby, Yeah. but I guess because it's so much like energy and everything goes into like oh how's the baby mm -hmm. are we doing everything right with the baby like this that like even you i think you forgot about yourself right like yeah. you were just like oh how do i get the baby to get milk you yeah. know like we were just like that like mariela was just like thinking like that she wasn't really thinking about herself no. so on friday they came in and they told her hey your blood pressure is high and we don't like some numbers that came back from your kidneys so we're gonna keep you an extra day so we're like okay that's fine so mm -hmm. they kept her on friday on saturday they were supposed to do more blood they did blood work in the morning and then they took her blood pressure my mom was there then we then my mom left and i came in so then when i came in um like at noon they your results hadn't come back yet no like the results hadn't come back they didn't come back really till like 2 p.m and then they said oh your kidney numbers are fine and what else was the other thing or the blood pressure. oh the pl blood pressure it was still out a little high because they send you home at like 148 yeah like her blood pressure was like 148 but they were like oh that's fine because you just gave birth yeah but mariela what mariela hadn't said or she was kind of saying like oh i have like this pain on my side mm -hmm. but she thought that it was from breastfeeding she yeah. thought like she just got a side ache because it was very much a side ache mm -hmm. so she said oh it's just a side ache mm -hmm. and she didn't think much of it no because and then you, you know the feeling like when you have air like you've taken some air so like it feels weird like it feels like you have air that you want to like let it out so I thought I was like, oh, well, it's going to come out some way, you know, like it was just like some air in me. So I didn't took it as like as an important matter towards it. Like, oh, my God, like I need to go back in the hospital and get this check. So I thought I was like, it's going to pass away. <laughs> no, it did not. It was completely <laughs> something just, else. She just wanted to go home. So then when the stuff came in, they're like, OK, we're going to release you on Saturday. So they released her like late, like it was like maybe 5 um, p.m 5 p.m i brought her here to her house um my mom juanita stayed here with her so when i came on saturday because you know they re on sunday they release you um and then the next day you have to take the baby for a checkup yeah. so i came to to get them to take to take the baby for the checkup we were over there and we were we had to go like up and down and the baby was great everything was fine he just had a little jaundice but nothing too serious and mariela was like walking behind me and i'm like what's wrong and she's like i can't breathe yeah. and i was like why you can't breathe i was like do you want to go to the emergency room because we were like close oh the urgent care, urgent care. because we were right down to it and she's like yeah and i'm like no this is serious because Mariela's not like that like Mariela can take pain she yep. and then obviously she just wanted to be with the baby right so i'm like okay so it hurts a lot she's like yeah that side ache is hurting me a lot and i'm like okay let's go so we went to urgent care and then we told them like oh she just gave birth she has a side ache and then the lady at the urgent care was like you know what you're better off at emergency because we, they have more resources and we're like okay so i told mariela i'm like are you sure you want me to leave you here yeah. and she's like yeah just leave me here because at emergency there's no visitors allowed so i left her there at 10 30 a.m right at, t at 10 30 a.m and i guess you said they took you right away yeah they did they took her right away they put her in a room she she was uh, feeling a lot of pain and she was feeling so much pain that they gave her morphine yeah they did i'm like when she when i called her and i was like how are you and then she's like oh i'm fine and i'm like mariela what are you on and she's like what morphine. she's like they gave me morphine and i'm like oh Mariela, why? Why did they give you morphine? You know, because again, we're all thinking about yeah. the baby. And we're like, you can't breastfeed on morphine. No. And then, but Mariela was like, I just couldn't stand the pain anymore. I was above 10. You know, at the hospital, they're like, what's your pain level? And then Mariela said that she was at, at a 10. Like it was hurting her a lot. So I was like, yeah, that's not air. So then I said, what are they telling you? And um, they said that they just did a whole bunch of tests, right? Tests. They wanted to do um, x-rays and then they wanted to do an ultrasound. <laughs> and a ct scan i think they went through a lot of exams just to find out what's going on and the reason they took me in right away is because they knew that i was just gay birth and in my workup it says that i was preeclampsia so they also were aware about my 
high pressure and all that stuff so that's why i think they also take me in sooner and then so the doctors like got on that right away like they were checking my pressure just to keep an eye on it and then with the pain level and then the way that i was describing to them they took it as like okay this is like an urgent matter we need to like figure out what's going on because i had a feeling they had an idea and then also they were i think scared because in my paperwork says kidney problems so they were trying to figure out like what's going on so um, I think that's another reason I have um, a feeling that they kind of were like, okay, we cannot just let you go or we're not going to make you wait. Like, and then I feel like an emergency, they have to figure out what's wrong with yeah. you, you know? Like emergencies, like we need to figure out what's wrong with you so we can get you out, you know? Like, yeah. but I dropped her off at 1030 in the morning. She didn't tell her what was wrong with her until 730 PM and they had put her on an IV already, right? So she couldn't eat. She was just getting liquid. So then at 730 PM, I finally called her and I was like, okay, what's wrong? What did they tell you? And then they tell her that she needs to get her gallbladder removed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? You have stones or I don't know what they're calling your gallbladder. Yeah. And then she's like, I don't know. So oh, obviously Mariela was just like, they just told her that she needed to have surgery. Yeah. So she was like over it, right? She was overwhelmed. She was like, what the F? I need to have surgery. And I was like, what the F? She needs to have surgery? Like, yep. why? Leo's waking up. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's here. Look who's making his debut. His little debut. Well, he's been on the channel, yeah. but... <laughs> está comiendo. We had him in the stroller. Estaba durmiendo. Y ya se despertó porque dijo que él también quiere chismear. <laughs> He's, he's uh, rightfully ours. He's rightfully Mariela's. Porque le gusta el chisme. Okay, so where you left off. So yeah, so we were both like, everybody was like, what the F? She needs to have like surgery, her gallbladder. Like you've never had problems. Like no. you've never had pain there. Your doctor has never been like, oh, you have stones in your mm -hmm. gallbladder, nothing. So I came to a shock to everybody. But I guess ultimately that's what the x-rays revealed that she had an inflamed gallbladder with really big stones. Yeah. Y pues ya allí. They, needed to get they needed to get her into surgery because she had just given birth. And it was like, it's not like, porque aquí, like, they tell you, oh, you have gallbladder stones. Oh, you'll pass them. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll pass them. My mom lasted with gallbladder stones for eight years before they operated her. Because they're like, oh, you'll pass them, you'll pass them. Like, they don't want to operate you. I don't know. I don't know if it's a thing or... I don't know that. But Marila did not know that she that, that was like a problem. Yeah. So, they, that's what they said they figured out. So, at 7.30, they told her that. Then, after, like, they didn't give her a room and the, like, pre-surgery part until, like... 10 30 huh like yeah pretty like, late late like late late and she wasn't like again she's been at the emergency since 10 30 in the morning so she had not eaten again she couldn't even eat because now she was going into surgery she had high blood pressure they had to lower her blood pressure before she had surgery it was like a whole thing and i get there and it's like after hours you there's no like visitors allowed girl i was pissed I was so mad. I was like walking back and forth because Mariela was like, she was over. She was crying. She was like emotional. She was exhausted. And I was like, Rosalinda, I was like, keep it together. Keep it together. I was like this, like trying to be super strong and not cry in front of her. But like out of like frustration and like just anger. So I was like, keep, keep it together. So I was just walking back and forth, walking back and forth. And yeah. then finally like her nurse and then on top of that the nurse there was like rude like he was so rude and so i tell him okay so what's going on with my sister like what's happening and then he's like oh i can't tell you she has to give permission and i'm like she's right here <laughs> no i think i was in the restroom i know but in my head i'm like she's right here and i'm like okay so then Marilla went to the restroom and she came back and all that stuff. And then um, I tell him, tell the guy to get in here now. <laughs> and then she calls him. She's like, um, can somebody come in here and explain to my sister what's going on? And then he comes like, así como, que ni quería venir. And I'm like, I forgot his name. He had like a weird name. I forgot too. He had a weird name, but I was like, look, I know that you just got here. And none of this that I'm about to tell you, it is your fault. But my sister has been been treated so poorly 
by everybody that she's come in contact here since she got here on Wednesday when she got induced. Like her labor was prolonged. I think a lot of things went wrong with her labor. They never treated her preeclampsia to start off with. They should have never let her go if she still had high blood pressure because then they would have seen this and I think they would have operated you like right away because you were already on the third floor. Like mm -hmm. I don't think you needed to go through emergency and then be put on a list. So all of that. Plus you're here and like Mariela needed to pump. It's been like 12 hours and she needed to pump. She needed her care because obviously she had a vaginal vaginal birth and this guy was just like oh um it's okay and i'm like no it's not okay i need a pump here now and i need an electric pump and i need all her stuff like i listed off all the things i want them down here now and we were only on like one floor difference from where like she was so i was like do i need to go down to the floor and get all that stuff and then he was just like laughing he's like uh <sighs> You can't do that. They won't let you. And I'm like, watch me, dude. Are you going to get the stuff? Yes or no? Like, I got, yeah. like, super, like, intense and, defense, and defensive. Yeah. And I felt so bad. I said, I'm sorry, but this is because so many things have been happening. Yeah. And it's not fair to my sister who had just given birth three days ago that all this stuff is happening to her because she's been poorly mistreated and just not, like, well taken care of. Yeah. And then he was just like, well, that has nothing to do with me. And I'm like, I get it, but you are not even being like... What understanding. Is, understanding, supportive. Yeah. You're fighting me on the things that she needs. Yeah, like we understand each floor is... It's different. It's different. And well, but when you see somebody that like went through something, they're telling you what I went through. At least tell me you're going to try to figure something out to get those things. Because that's something that I didn't understand from um, Kaiser's. Like, each floor, I get it. It's a different thing. It's a different department. You might have different people from different kind of things that are going through. But it's somebody that I, I, I literally just gave birth. And I still needed to take care of it. Like, if you're a vaginal area because um, you're still recovering. So, for me, it's like... In my opinion, how they made me feel is like, oh, you need to do that every day. Clean yourself every time you go to the restroom. So for me, not having those things throughout the whole process of me figuring out what the heck was going on with me on the side, I was freaking out. And not having the things, I was like, oh my God, like, they just told me I'm going to go through surgery. And what happens if I get something else down there? Is that going to take away more time for my baby? Like, so many things went through my head. And just the fact that, like, they were making it look like, oh, well... It's not our department or it's not or our it's problem, okay or it's okay that you don't do that um but yeah when i gave birth they're like oh no make sure you go you have to do that because you have to stay clean that was something that got me worried because like one more thing one more stop at this hospital it's more time for my baby i i, I stay there for my health because all i had in my head is like my baby like, I just had my baby. This is my first baby. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to lose my skin to skin to my baby by not being able to breastfeed. I'm like, so much medicine got pumped into me since the day I got in to give birth to the day that I exit that I was so scared that my baby was not going to take my milk no more or I probably will lose it. So it's a lot of things that went through my head that I was, my priority was him, you know? So for me not being able to take care of me, uh, like, with certain times, it was just, like, hurtful because... That's why I chose Kaiser because I was like, I thought it was number one, like priority or like they will try to do everything in their power to help you out. And the fact that I was treated the way that I was, it was just too much for me. And we've always had Kaiser. I don't know if you were going to, I don't know if you were going to save the hospital, but we've always had a Kaiser and we've never had an issue with them like ever. Like Raul even says, you put Kaiser at a pedestal. And I was like, because we've had it all our lives when we were kids, we've always, we've never had an issue with them. We've always been treated good. Like nothing bad has ever happened, but just everything that went down, I don't know if it was just like an isolated incident with my sister or they just like... Maybe it was just like, oh, they see so many birds, so many women come in and out, right? That they don't really care. But, and again, like the pre-surgery, like that guy, he was just there to make sure that you were on antibiotics, that you had like your fluids because you were going to have surgery. He didn't care about the other stuff. But I'm like, but that's not how it should be, right? Because you should ask like, okay, what is her story? Like, um, like, I don't know it. If I was a nurse, I was like, this poor woman just gave birth three three days ago. She's not even with her baby. She had morphine. She has to pump. Like, I don't know. I would be like, let's get 
let's get all the proper care she needs to make sure that she when she has the surgery she goes straight to her baby right but like it was just so like oh you're just in here for this okay bye like that and i was upset i went off again i do apologize if there is some nurses that are watching this nothing against any of you it was just that at that moment in time a lot of emotions were flowing and that is what came out and i did control myself because i didn't raise my voice or anything i was just like very stern and i was telling everything that happened to her for him to understand why is it that we needed the things that we needed why is it that i was upset that she was crying because she was crying and he was just like oh no don't cry don't cry mm -hmm. and i'm like Dude, you don't even know what she's going through. So stuff like that, like the bedside manners were terrible. So after that, um, she was in there on Sunday at 10 p.m. And then on Monday till 6 p.m., she spent all of Monday in the pre-surgery. She did end up getting a better nurse that helped her a lot. But um, they didn't operate her until like 7.30 p.m. on Monday. Then by 11.30 p.m., they let her out. Like, I know that it's an outpatient, like, surgery, but again, I would have thought that they would just put her in, um, in delivery again because she's going through this, and they let her out with high blood pressure again. So, I'm like, I just, Mariela just wanted to be home, and I just was so over it, too, that I was like, hey, let's just get you home. So, we took her mom back to mom's house. And she was fine. She thought, okay, I'm in the clear. I'm fine. The next day on, which was already Tuesday, mm -hmm. I guess she was like uh, five days postpartum or something. So since her blood pressure was elevated, labor and delivery called her and was like, hey, we need you to take your, your blood pressure because they sent her with the machine. So then in the morning she took it. It was fine. It was like 1.30, right? Yeah. But then they called her like at 4 and they told her to take it again. She took it again and it was like 160 something. So they're like, oh no, you need to come in so we can monitor. And then Marila was already like, she was calling me crying. She's like, I have to go back. I don't want to go back. And I'm like, okay, Marila, let's just take it one step at a time. Let's see what they need, right? Mm -hmm. So they just put her like in a little room and they had her on the... On the the monitor and then it was taking it every 15 minutes it was taking her blood pressure and at first and we were just talking mm -hmm. like i was just company we were, we were just talking we were like on our phones like stuff like that very lighthearted. Mm -hmm. like we weren't even thinking about the baby or we weren't even like rehashing everything that has happened we were fine and the blood uh, pressure started fine like it was like 130 like then it was like uh, 150 and then it was 142 mm -hmm. but then after the 142 it just kept climbing like mm -hmm. 145 149 150 155 and it got up to like 175 in like the two hours that we were there that she was being monitored so then the doctor an actual doctor finally comes in mm -hmm. and then she goes i'm so worried about your blood pressure like the two hours that you've been here it just keeps going up it's not going down um i I still think that you have preeclampsia. And I was like, what? And Mariela at this moment, you know, she just heard, I'm probably gonna stay, right? Yeah. The, the doctor hadn't even said that, so she didn't even get anything, she didn't process anything. I was just listening and I was like, and I was like, yes, she does have preeclampsia and she has had it and she never got treated for it. That was the problem. I think that this started with your preeclampsia that they never treated and so, all of these problems came so then the doctor's like okay like because we kind of told her but i was like it's been she's had a terrible few days or like you know yeah, week yeah. and she was just like oh like she was like i'm so sorry you know i know mama you know because they say mama like i'm sorry this has happened to you but you know this is this is going to be the last time you're going to be in here probably the last thing you're going to be in here we just need to treat it i recommend that you stay here and we're gonna put you on 24 hours magnesium so we can uh, mm -hmm. lower your blood pressure. It's something that they should have done after you gave labor if you already had preeclampsia, like even some of the symptoms. 
and I'm sorry that they didn't, but now you can do it here and then you'll go back with your baby. And then Mariela was just like, no, I don't want to be here. I mean, she was crying and I'm like, Mariela, what's your... I told her, I was like, you decide, it's your body, it's yeah. up to you. Then she, like the doctor left and she came back and she talked to her more and then she's like, okay, I'm going to stay. So this was Tuesday night. I left her Tuesday night. She stayed all of Wednesday until it was the 24 hours, which she went on magnesium at mm -hmm. Tuesday, 11 p.m. And then she had to be there Wednesday 11 p.m. And obviously in the labor and delivery they say that they don't release you like in the middle of the night So then they left her on like um, a 12 hour review Yeah the review. I mean they had me on, to on the 24 and then to watch me for another 12 hours So after the 11 it was 12 more hours than the following day Yeah so up to, to uh, rolling into Thursday Yeah and she was on Labrador, I think you you pronounce it. It's just, uh, this one's a pill for your yeah. blood pressure. So they gave her that. And then they took her off of it to see. And finally, like on Thursday, like around 3 p.m., they were like, okay, your blood pressure is stabilized. You're good to go. Yeah. So Thursday, a whole week. After she gave birth, she was out. They sent her with the Labrador... Um, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's the pill for the blood pressure. They sent her with that medication and she had to continue taking it um, two times a day. Mm -hmm. And then she had to keep taking her blood pressure to see if it's good. But now it's good and everything is fine. But all of that to say is that everything that happened is because I think while, even when she was pregnant and she was going through her weekly checkups, I think that midwife didn't see the signs of like preeclampsia before because Mariela swelled up so so much like more than just usual swell up swelling because I've seen other of my friends that have been pregnant Mariela was too too swollen her legs you couldn't even see her ankles she couldn't even bend her toes and then when I started noticing on her face I'm like this is not normal like I've never seen it in the face even in right here in her hands like you couldn't see her knuckles so I think because of that and obviously we were just so preoccupied and it's just like so much emotion and everything's yeah. going out so fast that like you just don't think right mm -hmm. and then but you think that the hospital the nurses the doctor would be like oh like let's watch that so I think it I personally think that a lot of it started like during like the ending weeks of her pregnancy her midwife didn't really see the signs or ignore them or didn't really care because everywhere she would go when she got transferred to emergency, when she got transferred to pre-surgery, even when she went back to labor and delivery, they were like, your legs look really bad. Like your legs are really, really bad. Like everybody was in shock. And I'm like, that's how her legs have been like the last three weeks of her pregnancy. Yeah. And her midwife never told her anything. Then when she got induced and then they just took so long to break her water even though she was dilating very quickly. That also escalating to the blood pressure going up even more. And then obviously after delivery they didn't put her on the 24 hour magnesium. So then her blood pressure never, it never got right. And obviously that led to the, the gallbladder being inflammated because of all the stress and the hormones you release after. So I think it was just so many things and that trickled down because she never got the proper care she needed from the beginning. Yeah. I feel like something I, I feel like, don't get me wrong, I love the hospital. I love the, the reason that it's known for. But I feel like it's a lot of things that they either didn't see, didn't notice, or they're probably know like oh well we have it under control or they see it all the time so what they thought that they were doing was the best thing for me was helping me out get it controlled and all the stuff but honestly i feel like no there's a lot of things that they i don't know they didn't see or they thought that it wasn't too elevated for me to be taking release. a release you know so like for me it was just like okay but you can still do like the extra mile steps for you to be able to see like if you feel like I'm not ready like I wouldn't have not mind stay like an extra day just so I know I wouldn't have to go through the ordeal that I went through because a lot of the stress that I got caused the anxiety that I got caused like it's a lot of emotions that I honestly like if people a lot of people know me I suck in a lot like I 
I will take pain. I will be very understanding through the whole process. Like I, I was understanding, so understanding towards them because I always think for everybody else. Like I'm always putting myself last. So for me, I was like, okay, I understand they might be short staff or they have a lot of people in delivery. Like that's why she's not coming. But just the fact that I would hear like small talks between the nurses about how oh my baby was gonna be too big so and there wasn't somebody else who was a little bit smaller they're they're coming through first and then the fact that i was telling them like no i'm in pain and they kept putting me in different positions and like i just felt like i wasn't being like properly taken properly care. taken care of just because they said like oh yours is big so your baby's big so it probably will take us a little bit longer or when i even asked for a doctor or like i would ask she like oh she's coming she's coming like if she's not coming, at least tell me. Or at least try to get somebody in here so they can check me. Because I was just like in so much pain. And then honestly, when my baby was born, I didn't get to enjoy it. Like I was in so much pain. I just had the biggest relief when they put the baby on top of me. Because I just wanted to make sure he was good. He was okay. Like I heard him cry. But I wasn't able even to cry, to feel the relief like he's here with me, like feel the emotion of being a mom finally with his baby on skin to skin. I didn't feel that because in my head, all I felt was sharp pain. I was stressed. I just wanted it to be done with. And what kind of mom wants that? Like a mom who was the first time, I want to enjoy it. That's why I bought it for the epidural because I was like, I'm not going to feel anything. So I'll be able to have the pleasure to have the baby and feel every emotion. But I feel like they stole that from me. Because I, I have a video that one of the nurses was kind enough to take. You could see me shaking. You can see my face. You can see everything in my body saying I was done with. I, I wanted to just go home and be with my baby and put this behind me. That was my face. It wasn't an emotion. She was like checked out. Yeah. Like I was emotionally checked out. And what kind of mom, first time mom of all things should be feeling in that moment not that so for me it was just a lot of like overwhelming situation that led me to feel that way yeah and we were i saw that video and i you know i was just seeing the baby and it was so cute but then i look at mariela's face and i'm like like mariela's not there like mm -hmm. that's not mariela she's not enjoying it she wasn't even like like i don't know like happy because she was going through all of those emotions and because she was just sad and she had just checked out at that moment like i feel like her main priority was like pushing the baby out and then once the baby was out she was like okay like you could see it you could see it in her eyes and everything and i'm like yeah that is so wrong like she didn't get to enjoy that at all and honestly i like i said i know mariela was living it so it was her harder for her and obviously like with the connection with the baby that was her thing but for us like as me as my, the sister and my mom right like we were so mad too and so upset that they that they weren't taking care of her she was thinking about the baby we were taking care of her obviously the baby too but it was like she's not being properly taken care of like all of this went bad so like it went it went down so wrong and we were just so upset and so it was it was intense it yeah. was the whole week everything was intense every time she got moved every time she had to go back to the hospital like everything was intense for all of us we were so upset like every all kinds of emotions it was all emotions just for this little buggy right here look it just for us baby <laughs> worth it but i feel like things could have gone down differently and that's what you know overall yeah. we're like you know Everything happened. It already happened. We went through it. It was hard. That week was very hard for all of us, especially for Mariela. But we got through it, and we're happy that we did. Yeah. But obviously, we would never want that. Like, even Mariela was like, I would never wish this on my worst enemy. No. Because it's like stealing, you know, like you're robbing that moment with your baby, with your child. Like, Mariela didn't really spend the first week with her baby, and that sucks. And yeah. he's two weeks officially today. So, and, for me, okay. this is my first week with him. Like, being, like, sleep deprived <laughs> and skin to skin with him while I feels freedom. Because that's something personal that I didn't want to lose for him. Like, for me, 
that this is my first week. I know it's the second week because he was born on March 10th, but for me, this is my first week experiencing everything, the mom, and it feels amazing, trust me. And this I know, I wanna say thank you to all the good nurses that I end up did end up having because they were fully on respectful, nice, kind. Some of them were very understanding because at one point I confessed to one nurse who found me like crying and she's like, what happened? And I, I think it was like my third time in there when they were doing the whole pressure thing. And I told her everything and she was very understanding. She's like, you should have never gone through this and I do apologize. But I'm from somebody who cares, like, I, I want to say sorry for all of the other people who didn't truthfully took care of you. So for those who helped me a lot, I want to say thank you. Thank you to my sister and to my mom, who honestly, if I didn't have them, a girl, you're, this girl would be <laughs> on the floor every night crying after putting this baby to, to sleep because it was very painful. It was very um, painful, stressful, like... I can't even put it into words like when I would go over it and just the fact that like I got the strength from my mom and my sister to overcome this and just finally have the peace in mind with my baby I feel good you know because honestly after the surgery labor and stress like I, if I didn't have them I don't know who if I was be able to because I'm still not able to do certain things by myself and I need the help of my mom and just being able to have her hand every morning helping out with the baby and her pushing me through this, it's amazing. I just want to say thank you so much Rosalinda for helping me with this little peanut because that's his little nickname. Look at him. Because so, you're so welcome. He's so much worth it. Like this little pain in the butt, long, big and all. He was worth every little pain I had. Um, not so much afterwards. <laughs> but um, he's worth it. My sister is worth it. My mom was worth being able to fight and continue pushing myself to emotionally tell myself, I got this. This is just one more barrier. I'll be home soon. And thinking about him, I was like, I'm coming home to you, It baby. really helped, yeah. It helped a lot. But it was, like, stressful. And, I mean, now you can see what moms go through. But... The whole ordeal was very stressful, nerve-wracking, like it was so emotional, but we're glad that we got through it. Pero de que fue una historia, <laughs> fue una historia, yes. as you guys can tell. But, you know, thankfully everybody's nice and healthy. Leo's right here, healthy big boy. Marilla's now healthy, everything's yes. under control. So, yeah, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this very long labor and delivery from my sister. Um, it was a lot, but we're glad that everything turned out great. Gracias a Dios, todos estamos bien, todos están bien, Mariela and Leo. And we just want to take the time to um, say thank you all to who, like, congratulated us. Like, yes. mainly Mariela. Congratulations, Mariela, <laughs> for being a mom. Yes. Mariela deserves it. She'll be the best mom ever. I know it. But thank you so much for sticking around and watching this. And we'll see you all in the next video. Yes. Bye. Thank you.